Hey everyone, I'm Budget Nerd. Thanks for tuning in. Ever since adding the Air Raid intake on my Mustang, I've been getting the urge to modify. I'll be installing a new head unit, amp, and 10 inch subwoofer in a custom box in my 2006 Mustang. Feel free to come along for the ride or follow the steps if you want to know how it's done. If you're even a tiny bit handy and know what to pay attention to, it's something you can do yourself. In this video, part one of most likely a two-part series, I'll be going over how to install the head unit. I'll be releasing part two soon, and that will cover the amp in the speaker box, at least that's the plan. I'll add a link below to any other videos after they've been released. Also, check the description for timestamps if you want to see something specific to jump around. The head unit I'm going with is the Kenwood Exelon Reference DNX996XR. I chose this one because it has navigation, a 720p screen, and has wireless Android Auto. By the way, I purchased all of this with my own monies. Nothing was provided. Here's the manual and a few of the extras that you get that you may need. These faceplates I didn't use for my Mustang. For my Mustang, I had to purchase this separate bracket to mount it into the car. If you're installing this head unit or a similar sized one into a 2005 to 2009 Mustang, I've linked this mounting bracket down in the description. In fact, I've linked all the stuff I'm using should you want to follow along. You'll get a wire harness in the box that goes into the back of your head unit. You'll also want to purchase a separate wiring harness that plugs into your factory harness and then wire the two harnesses together so you won't have to cut up your factory wiring. More on this later. If you need this harness, you can also find its link below. Before you start, make sure you eject any CD in your existing head unit first, then disconnect the negative cable from the battery and push it off to the side. Jump into your Stang and pull up the parking brake. Pop off the shifter cover and lift it up out of the way. To make it a little easier, you could remove it entirely. Next, remove the two screws that are here and here. Now you can start to pull up and back on the center console plastic. I ended up unscrewing the shifter knob and removing all that to make it easier. Once that is out, just grab and pull the two side pieces off. You have six bolts to remove that hold the whole face piece in place. Carefully pull it by bending it in the middle and pulling the top lip down and out. Once you get it to this part, um, you gotta take out a few connectors back there. Um, this one, there's not a lot of slack on, but you can come up from behind and get them. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I pulled this off camera, but basically you gotta undo uh, a little clip that goes in there. You gotta undo this and that. This one just has a clip here that pinches. It's right here. You can just kind of pinch it and it'll come out. This one you just push on this tab here and it'll pop out. And this one um, also has a little push thing you can clip out. Once you do that, you just got uh, this one to deal with, which um, I just put a screwdriver right in here and pried this down and it slid out. And this one was a little more interesting. It was this, this metal piece was aimed down here or folded down here and I just popped it up and it pulled out. I did it off camera but that's kind of how you do it. If you want some more details there's a couple links to good videos with a little more detail than I'm interested in putting in here in the description if you're interested. But anyway yeah pop this guy out. To finally get the stereo out there are four bolts holding it in place. Remove these, unplug the harness, there's a few of them, and the antenna from the back of the head unit, the old one, and then out it comes. It's a good idea when you're in here and you got it open like this, give it a quick clean. I, you know, it's not spotless, but hey, you should have seen it before. Okay, so I'm putting together the wire harness for my Mustang 
and putting it together with the one that came with the stereo. Um, if you're after, again, what model stereo, just check the description. I have a link to that in the description too. Um, my my car's a Mustang, it's the 2006. Uh, the stereo's the plain old base stereo. It's not the Shaker 500 nor the Shaker 1000, or maybe I wouldn't be doing this, I don't know. So if you're is set up exactly the way, then you can check the description and follow along perfectly. But basically putting these things together is not wildly easy. And as everyone's discovered, I'm no electrician, so, um, but basically what this is, is just, you know, connecting the same color to the same color as the other one. Um, so you're red to red, you're yellow to yellow, black to black. Um, these here I bundled up are for the speakers. So you got your purple and purple, uh, green and green, uh, white and white, that, that kind of stuff. So there's, there's a white and then there's a white and black. Um, so you want to make sure you get the, cause you can't put either white to either white. You got to get the white and the black put together, the white and the white. And over here on this one, it's the same exact thing. So these are for the speakers. These are for the speakers, so, and you just wire up the rest. So here, these ones I won't be using. Some of these are for cameras, ones for the pulse, like speed pulse something, which I don't think my car even uses or needs or anything. So I wired that up, I won't use it. Um, the purple one I won't be using. Uh, the P control, power control, this is what you'd run from the, the head unit to your amp. Now, if you're, and see this one has a blue and white one as well. So if your Mustang has the Shaker 500 or Shaker 1000, then perhaps you would connect these two together, this blue and white and this blue and white. Um, but since I don't, there's nothing for me to run this to, but I'm adding an amp right here. Um, so I'll need it. So I'll run this myself from here to my amp. And this one is the parking switch which it claims here needs to be connected to the, the parking brake detection harness or whatnot, just to make sure the parking brake is on to enable and disable certain features. I'm just gonna ground it. That way I can just go around it, but you know, do it your own risk. Don't do anything dumb. So I just gotta wire this back together or put this together and um, make it look all pretty. There we go. Far from perfect, but it'll do. I would have soldered it. I even bought some heat shrink, but uh, my soldering gun is packed, and I mean, this will work. So, not perfect, but uh, it's ready to go. And of course, I left out this to run to the amp and this to ground, and uh, it's ready to put in. Plug in the wire harness you made into your car's factory wire harness. I still had the amp power on wire and the parking brake wire to deal with. You could wire the parking brake wire to the parking brake, like a good little boy or girl, or ground it to the chassis somewhere, or what I ended up doing, just attaching it to a ground wire on the harness itself. If you're installing an amp, run the amp power wire and your RCA cables. These will go all the way from your head unit to the amp. Make sure you give yourself enough slack and run the cables and hide them how it makes sense for your car. Next, I will be running some extra USB cables. So I plan on using the USB ports on the back of the new head unit, but rather than just having USB cables just hanging out there or dangling or whatnot, I want it to look good. So I'm gonna run this. It, uh, plugs into the back of the head unit and then runs all the way up to a cigarette adapter. Um, I'm gonna use that one there. So basically you just gotta take this out. It kind of sets up the same way the other one does. Pop it out, get it out of there, and then replace it with that, which is what I'll do. Once the lighter is removed, feed your USB wires through, Feed on and fasten the nut, and then route the USB wires through the center console and then behind where the head unit will go. I didn't get it on camera, but you'll also want to mount your GPS receiver under the dash or wherever you want. This head unit also has a microphone. I hadn't mounted it, but I did get the wire in place 
and ready to be connected. GPS, the USB, the microphone, the sub, um, the remote line to the sub is ready to go as well. Um, the antenna, of course. So it should all be staged and ready to go for the head unit. Um, the wires that I'm gonna be running to the sub and whatnot, I, I ran right through there. It was a pretty good spot to run through there and I'll run those later, but right now it's time to get the head unit put together and installed. Over on our workbench, grab your mounting bracket, put it together, and attach it. It has some screw holes on the side to mount it. They didn't seem to line up perfectly. So I was having some issues with this. It's not... I mean, this screw's lined up, but I had to kind of pull out... I may do that one too. It didn't quite line up, but I mean, if you can just pop out a little of that plastic, it works. One little quirk about the Mustang and this head unit, maybe others, is it won't dim when the headlights are turned on using the factory harness setup. In the Mustang, you have to actually tie into a wire that has 12 volts when the headlights are on and 0 volts when they're off. I spliced into the orange-white Illumi wire from the stereo harness into the wire here on this harness that makes its lights come on when the headlights are turned on. I don't remember which wire it was, but you could use a multimeter to find out which wire has 12 volts when the headlights are on. Next, you just need to plug everything in. If you give yourself enough slack on the wires, it's not too hard. Once it's all connected, you could reconnect the battery to make sure it all works before you put it back together. Make sure all speakers are providing sound, the screen dims when the headlights turn on, and all the functions work. Okay, so it's pretty much put together, but I did leave it uh, a little unbuttoned. That way I can just test it. I connected the battery, obviously, and turned it on and set it up. Uh, I thought I was recording during the setup, but nope. So anyway, here we are. Uh, everything seems good. So I'm just gonna verify, and uh, once it for sure is good, I'll button it up the rest of the way. But uh, so far, pretty excited. Well, everything worked great. This thing's pretty neat. The music sounds better just because it'll push my stock speakers a little harder. There were a lot of options to customize the sound, mirror my cell phone screen, place hands-free calls, use Google Maps with Android Auto, and more. All of these features now makes me wonder why I didn't do this a while ago. Well, I put everything back together, and now it's all installed. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Stay tuned for part two, where we hopefully can wrap it up, going over the amp install and speaker box build. Thanks for watching.